So good morning. Uh, welcome to the website. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little tour around. Uh, this is the homepage, rogerprice.me. And here you have um, actually a fabulous location in Madeira. Uh, this is the Digital Nomad Center in Madeira. And uh, down below here, you have all of my uh, articles that I've published so far. You'll see so far, I have published 21 of them. And uh, this, in fact, documents the story uh, over the last uh, seven or eight months or so, starting back, as you see, at the beginning of December last year. Um, a few of updates from Hong Kong, then to Sai Kung. Uh, then, of course, we had Christmas in Hong Kong. I, I did manage to celebrate my 10 years in Hong Kong. Um, what turned out to be a rather prescient uh, picture that I used, uh, putting Christmas away uh, with Belfast City Hall in the background. Uh, little did I know that a few weeks later, I would in fact be in Belfast. Um, then I became a little bit more uh, outspoken, really trying to get people to wake up to what's going on. And I think these articles, number seven and number eight, are quite important. They have a lot of important content for you. Uh, number nine is where we had uh, abandoned Hong Kong. We had um, given up uh, fighting against the system and we had decided to take the exit uh, to leave the lunacy and insanity that was uh, going ongoing in Hong Kong. Um, we spent a few weeks in Belfast uh, before moving on to uh, Madeira and uh, I initially was working in Madeira, then I took some holiday off. Uh, then for uh, various reasons, I had to come back to Belfast uh, for family reasons for a week. And then after another week, we were back again in Madeira, um, where again, I was looking at choices and decisions and uh, suggesting to you how to evaluate your own. Uh, issue 14, in fact, was a rather uh, straightforward one in terms of telling you how to use the Phoenix wallet and explaining to you how to get started with uh, Lightning. Um, Lightning and Bitcoin. Lightning is an easy way to transfer Bitcoin, which is obviously a better asset to enable you to transfer it from one person to another uh, internationally, whatever you want to do. This is really revolutionary and suggest that you read this and you understand it more. Uh, then issue 15, I had something of uh, reflective time, looking at a number of uh, books, including uh, this article, which is this book, which is um, uh, Meditations, uh, which is one that I uh, highly recommend from Marcus Aurelius, who's one of the uh, Roman emperors. One of the most powerful Roman emperors. It's uh, extracts from his personal diary. Uh, I then went on to explain to people why it's necessary that we stop fighting with each other. Uh, I don't know, governments today or people's uh, natural tendencies, whatever you want to say, it's causing people to divide up into factions and to fight with each other. And at no time in the past has this ever been a productive time. The only time that we have production is when people are not fighting, when they are collaborating for mutual gain. and. Um, uh, I also indicate, I think in this one, that uh, there was, remind people that there was a famous study by the Americans, um, the report from Iron Mountain, which uh, rather famously, it was a think tank that rather famously concluded that um, war or the credible threat of war is necessary for people to be subservient to a government. So this ought to make you think. Um, <clears throat> number 17, we were actually back in uh, Northern Ireland for a while and uh, putting first things first, uh, family things that we needed to do. Uh, then as July broke, um, I was already uh, moving into a new phase, having stopped working for a while and uh, doing some planning, uh, planning some projects that I'm working on in the currently and in the months ahead. Uh, issue 19 uh, was a little bit of summer weather that we had for a few days and some further reflections. Um, in issue 20, uh, what I did was to do a tour of my library, which is to go through basically uh, quite a number of um, books that I have in my library and uh, to tell you why I like these and uh, to give you links and references and reviews. And then here, uh, issue 21, which is the latest article, um, 
I am again coming back on the theme of the matrix and then telling you that uh, this is something that you absolutely need to see for yourself. Um, I see it clearly, but I cannot see it for you. You have to see it for yourself. Uh, once you see it, you cannot unsee it. So I do encourage you to click on and to read uh, Article uh, 21. Um, I talked to you a little bit here about the, uh, the current uh, affairs here in Northern Ireland. I give you the updates on my projects. Um, there is also a Telegram group that you can click on and join. And this Telegram group makes it easy uh, to communicate and to ask questions on the newsletter. Um, I go through about the Bitcoin node that I'm running. Uh, this is an interesting uh, view on the Bitcoin network. If you click on this, you will see the transactions actually going through the network and you'll see how it works. Uh, Lightning, no Lightning node is something else that I'm working on. And Jonathan Levy is a fantastic uh, source of information. You can click here on his YouTube channel uh, and you can click on this article in particular, which is interesting. And if you want to go straight to the summary, uh, then click here on the summary and conclusions. Um, I then do a little bit of a summary on money macro in the world. Um, most people, in fact, are really unaware of how money has evolved over the years and continues to evolve. Uh, as with taxes, they assume that the way it is now is the way it has always been and the way it will always be. Uh, this is absolutely not the case. Uh, and the magnitude of the current experiment, uh, which is ongoing, along with the ongoing changes, really ought to surprise you if not concern you. So uh, before diving into the main course, which is this interview that I have here from Jeff Schneider, I do recommend that you start by reading Lynn Alden's uh, A to Z explainer of what money really is, or you might prefer to listen to Guy, Guy, Guy Swan uh, reading it. Uh, either one of those I recommend. Uh, once you have done that, then I suggest you come back and you can click on the uh, interview which was uh, with, between Peter McCormick and Jeff Schneider. So uh, this week I came across this interview and I'm still trying to get my head around the implications. Um, it does begin to solidify thoughts that I had always suspected in my early days working at Swift when I managed the development of their Nostro account reconciliation software. This is software that was eventually sold to all of the major correspondent banks around the world to do reconciliation of their Nostro accounts. Uh, do watch the interview and let me know your thoughts. Uh, perhaps it is just a coincidence that SWIFT was formed in 1973, just after the US broke from the gold standard. Um, and this was also the time that the Euro dollar uh, came into um, force in a bigger way. The Euro dollar is an interesting beast. Uh, Jeff argues that this system in fact has taken on a life of its own. And this does rather confirm the suspicions that I had all those years ago when I was working at Swift. Uh, Nostro accounting is just double entry bookkeeping. And uh, if you did listen to the article from Darren Feinstein, which I clicked to here, you will know how easy it is to subvert double entry bookkeeping. Um, and uh, the Euro dollar system also be aware that it is explicitly outside of the control of the Federal Reserve. So while everybody talks about dollars and how the US uh, interest rate affects the worldwide economy, the euro dollar system and the euro dollars that exist within it are in fact explicitly outside of the control of the Federal Reserve and it seems also all of the other central banks. So this too ought to concern you. Um, and I do tend to agree uh, with Peter and Jeff's conclusion uh, on who does uh, control this. So do listen to the article and let me know your thoughts. Um, one last uh, thought on this topic, which I'll give you, is um, do consider uh, reading or listening to When Money Dies, uh, which is a book on the collapse of the German economy uh, back in the 19, late 1920s and 1930s. So do listen to that and uh, you will perhaps see some interesting parallels. Uh, book of the week that I give, um, I am currently reading or rather listening on Audible to Matthias de Smet's eye-opening book, The Psychology of Totalitarianism, and you have a link to it here. 
Uh, the book might seem a little bit pricey, but really it is worth every penny that you spend on it. And in fact, if you open a new account with audible.com, you get your first book for free. So you can get this book for free and uh, there really is no excuse for not getting it. Um, Matthias also uh, gives a firsthand explanation of how and why he wrote the book in this interview that I linked to with Ivor Cummins. Uh, I do recommend you listen to this. Um, I'm actually saving my re full review of the book for later, but I cannot recommend this book highly enough. It's absolutely required reading. Uh, a couple of other things somewhat related and corroborating much of what Matthias uh, recounts. Svetsky um, explains how common people are so readily turned into state mercenaries. Um, and here you should read The Most Dangerous Superstition by Larkin Rose. Um, and I do recall uh, being sickened to observe uh, this inaction in Hong Kong, basically where the little, what I call the little people. So these are just the little people who take care of public parks and buildings and also those who sort of manage the rubbish uh, distributions from the building, they're really being turned into little uh, vigilantes and enforcers of petty regulations. Um, also, and somewhat related to this is the way in which the Hong Kong police, which used to be really benign and uh, well loved by the people, um, and Hong Kong is one of the places of lowest crime anywhere in the world, uh, they were really turned into the enemy of the people by the militarization that took place during the 2019 protests, which I do believe was a proxy war being fought in Hong Kong. And if you look around, you will uh, see similar examples. Uh, think back to Australia and what happened in Melbourne. Think back to Canada and what happened with the truckers. Think back to Germany and what you undoubtedly saw about people walking their dogs being accosted. Think about the UK and people who were hiking or going on a picnic or a beach or whatever, how they were treated uh, by the police. So similar tactics have been used to uh, weaponize uh, the police against the populations and to instill fear into them. Pretty much everywhere, as I say. So uh, do be alert anywhere that you hear somebody saying, well, I'm just doing my job, uh, because this is a warning sign of this in force. And then Svetsi goes on to describe another thing, which is that the primary threat, threat to freedom and justice is not greed or hatred or any of the other emotions. It's the superstition that infects people to well-intentioned people to support and advocate violence and oppression against others. Uh, and if you remove this one superstition, um, it would remove the vast majority of suffering in the world. And uh, I do say here, recall what happened to the Jews and the Yellow Star. If you don't know that, click here and you can read about it. Uh, this is coming to a city near you soon if you do not wake up and push back. Equally, if you wake up and push back, I think we can still avoid the worst of that. And that's also what uh, Matthias concludes in his book. Um, Svetsky did a related read on an equally concerning uh, set of experiments called the Milgram experiments. And if you listen to this read, you will realize it is something that you probably already know. You may have heard about this before. And I will say what you do next is uh, up to you. So think carefully. Huh? Um, moving on then to something else. Um, the thought for the week uh, is I provide here a link to a 10 minute video from Randall Carlson. Uh, and Randall asked the question, why is there no record of ancient humans? And um, this is just an extract from that 10 minute presentation. If you look at the entire known history of humans on earth, uh, the period that he talks about is this period here, which is about 160,000 years. You'll find that the only um, documented evidence of humans is in this very last section here, very last section here. Um, and he points out that there has been over history a number of well-documented catastrophic events which have happened. And these are events that we can date by various means. Um, 
And uh, you want to, well, I'll not spoil it. You want to listen to what Randall says. And maybe you let me know your thoughts afterwards. Um, after that, you might want to check Randall's related lecture. Uh, this is a slightly longer lecture. Um, it's about an hour and a half, or an hour and three quarters, I think, uh, where he talks about um, things that you might not have seen or known around numbers. So uh, there's some interesting uh, things to see here. So especially if you like the imperial uh, measurement system, um, equally with some tantalizing hints that are inserted from the metric system. So again, you've got to wonder how and where do these things come from? Let me have your thoughts. Huh? Uh, and then as usual, I conclude with a few things that I have discovered over the last week or so. These are interesting things for your enjoyment and edification. Uh, Guy um, from Coin, uh, Coin Bureau explains uh, why you need to be concerned about central bank digital currencies. Um, and you need to look at uh, what's happening in China in terms of bank runs. And this too is something that can happen in uh, developed countries. Do not believe that this cannot happen to you. So think about it. Eh? Um, Saifedean uh, explains his fiat standard course. I do highly recommend that you either take or follow his course or you read his book. Uh, both of them absolutely uh, recommended. And I say forewarned is forearmed. Um, also, if you believe that the United States is the role for democracy, uh, you do want to click through and read this uh, study from Princeton University. Uh, it might give you some interesting uh, pause for thought. Uh, you might also want to go here and understand why Plato one of the ancient Greek uh, philosophers, and indeed the ancient Greeks in general, were well aware of the flaws of democracy and how democracy fails, or how it fails to live up to expectations that uh, the masses tend to believe. So this has been very well documented and very well known for thousands of years. Uh, and uh, people conveniently forget or conveniently were never taught. So that's something I suggest you look at. Uh, meanwhile, more up to the current day, uh, Joe uh, from Heresy Financial reminds us of the consequences of the stronger dollar. You might have noticed that the United States dollar is increasing in strength against all of the other currencies. Uh, you might want to understand uh, when this has happened before and what happened next. And that's what he explains here. Um, but keep in mind that what's happening now is on a completely different scale to what has happened before. Um, and then lastly, I will say, if you have an itch somewhere, you know, at the back of your mind that you can't quite scratch, it's just a feeling that perhaps things in the world are not right. It's not, things are not great. It's not really the way it should be. I do recommend that you read Caitlin Johnson's article. It's an article that she wrote in July of last year. Uh, I only discovered it recently, but it aligns fully with all of the things that I have been saying also over the last year. So do click through and uh, read Caitlin's article. And indeed, she's a prolific writer uh, with many, many prescient and recommended uh, articles. Um, and then lastly, um, if you're still not entirely sure about things, I do recommend that you click here and you watch this um, two minute um, clip. It's a scene from, you might recognize it, The Matrix. And uh, I recommend that you click through and you watch this because I think uh, Guy Swan does a fantastic job of explaining to you what um, is happening today and why. And uh, if you're interested to talk about this, then uh, do click through, do join the Telegram group that we have below. Uh, you can click on this link and you can join. Uh, do also share this newsletter uh, with your friends and colleagues. So I hope you find that useful. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you as a subscriber and I'll see you in another session.